Lies full with uncertainty, just like today. So I want to give a, a, a brief introduction about the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan. Now in the 1860s, there are two missionaries that from two different countries. One from Port Nicole, right now, Church of Scotland. The other one from Church of Canada, right now. They visit Taiwan in 1860, and they start their mission in Taiwan as Presbyterian Church and missionaries. And right now, uh, after 160 years later, there are more than 1,200 local congregations under PCT in Taiwan. And I visit one of them this year. They have, they have uh, three active seminaries at this moment, but they have more other seminaries before. And right now they own two different universities and more than 10 hospitals all around Taiwan at this point. And I was uh, one of the instructors in 2016. At that time, we have more than 30 local churches participate in this project. At that, that year, we have more than 150 people from all around the country to visit us. And that year, I was an instructor of the deaf congregation. So we have five, uh, one from the United States, one from Malaysia, one from South Korea, and one from Singapore. So we have lots of fun. We translate from Taiwanese Sign Language to Mandarin or Taiwanese and to me I will translate to English people from different countries understand in their own way so this is how this I Love Mission Camp happened Our church also familiar with the missionary If you notice this uh, interesting cross just by our main entrance that was 1937 was given to the church there were two missionaries sent by our church to Thailand and people convert into Christianity in Thailand and one young man handcraft that cross and sent back to our church as a symbol of the mission, the missionaries connect to our church and I'm very happy today that our church sent another missionaries to different countries to learn from them and now today they are come back to us to report what they have done experience in the foreign country. I want to invite you to give a very warm welcome to Kai, our missionaries uh, to Taiwan. Hello, um, my name is Kai Bukorski and I am very lucky to have been able to go on this amazing mission trip to Taiwan. Okay, so when I was first leaving for the airport, I actually made the horrible mistake of forgetting my passport. So we had to go back home. Thankfully, my mom was amazing, and she was able to get like another flight and make sure everything was taken care of. So I was leaving the next day instead, and I'd be alive, arriving July 5th. So when we actually did leave, and I had my passport, I was like, I was feeling a bit nervous. I was like, wow, like. I've been to Taiwan before, but I've never actually traveled internationally alone. And I was just starting to get used to traveling on a plane alone, because I've been traveling around the US a bit, you know. And I was just like, okay, um, I've been to this airport, but I'm, I'm really nervous going all alone. But I just had to go, so we got on the plane, I was saying bye before then, um, saying bye to my mom and Damien. And then I was I was off, I was on the plane, I, I slept for a bit, you know, got to eat the food, it was really good. Um, I took this airline called Eva Airlines when I go to Taiwan, and they have these little TVs, as you can see on the screen, and there's this interactive map, and you can see where you are and stuff. And they give two meals, so pretty good. Um, then around 14 hours later, I got off the plane. I was in Taiwan. Uh, it's this airport called Taoyuan Airport. Um, and I was like, okay, so I, I can navigate this. I can do it alone, and I did, but I called my mom. I was like, oh, so I'm here. Um, this is where I am in the airport. And I was a bit nervous, but I was able to make it through. So this is me arriving. I got to, I got through baggage claims and everything. There's a little form you sign. And I was in Taiwan. I'd, I'd made it in. And I was a bit nervous because like we were contacting the people that were going to pick me up. And I was like, oh, I hope they're there. Like I hope I wasn't inconveniencing them by being late. Sure enough, I walk out into this area, um, the pickup area of the airport. There they are, they have my name on the sign. Uh, there's a bunch of people there and they're like, hey, 
like they're waving, they're so sweet. And I was like immediately, I was so relieved because they picked me up and everything. So I met, their names were um, Sammy, Ty Lee, Chia Ying, Andrew, and Chi Yu. And Andrew's actually. Oh, is it? Oh, there we go, <laughs> sorry. Um, and Andrew's actually from New Zealand, and we picked him up along with me. We kind of came at the same time. So we drove back to the My Lady Providence Hotel. It's like this high school, and they have these dorms, and that's where we stayed. So we got to take a shower, like relax a bit, because we were all really tired from the long flight, and we were given our little, our name tag, we were given a shirt, or this is I Love Taiwan, and just, we started getting introduced to the area, kind of, and we had like our worship service, and we got ready to like be sent off to our different churches. There was some really nice activities that ILT provided, actually. Um, we got to play like some name games and stuff. We did a drawing game. And if you didn't know, ILT is a two-week program that you can go to. It's in Taiwan, and everyone from ages 16 to 35 come from all over the world to go to different churches around Taiwan and just help out with the community in Taiwan, basically. Um, help out serve in different churches. So. This is, our, this is our first two days with ILT. Um, we traveled around, we went to this museum. This museum. Uh, we went to a church called Qinan Church. We got to learn the history of it and we're kind of like starting to get used to helping out with a different church. Um, these are some pictures. Oh, let me see if it, these are some pictures from there. Um, we got to go to this night market together. It was a really fun bonding experience to meet all the members because we had, there was people from Korea, people from India, people from Japan, and I was from America, and there was, of course, the people of Taiwan there. And it was really cool to meet all these people from around the world. Uh, so then we got ready to leave. So I traveled with two staff members from ILT. Um, they were super sweet, and I'm very thankful to them. Their names were Yalin and Yitong, and they helped us, they transported us, like kind of, they helped us take the trains, take the high-speed rail and everything to our church, which is called Xianghe Church. So we got on the trains, it was a bit stressful because we had our luggage and everything, and it was kind of heavy. I was like, oh, like we're going to this place and everything. Um, but when we got there, it was, it was all worth it because we were picked up, we got to meet the pastor, and actually like one of my first interactions, I was speaking with um, Yi Zhong and Yao in Chinese like a bit, and the pastor was like, ah, me the Zhong and Nama Li Ha, which is, your Chinese is so good. And this is something I, I heard a few times while I was in Taiwan, this trip. Um, everyone was so sweet, they were very supportive of like my learning Chinese and everything, and they were like, oh, your, your Chinese is good, and I would like practice with them. And actually, before we departed, another person we met who was going to um, go to this church with me was named Mr. Sia, and he is from India, um, Mizoram specifically. Very sweet. And so we had our group. We had Yijong, Yalin, and Mr. Sia, and that was our trip to Xiangha. So, um, in a few hours, we were able to get there, and this is on like the lower part of Taiwan, as you can see. It's in a city called Chai City. So we got to the church, like we met the pastor and everything, and the first place we went to was this little hot pot restaurant. So we got to meet each other, like know each other's names, um, talk a bit, and I actually like practiced speaking more Chinese, and it was just really fun to like get that experience. Um, so yeah, after that, we actually went to the church, um, and we kind of just got to sit down for a bit. And a lot of some of the kids from the summer camp we were helping out with were there. And they were like coming up to me, and it was really sweet because they were like, "Oh, like she can speak Chinese." Like they were saying, "Ha hui shou dong wen," which means she can speak Chinese. And they were so excited, and I was like trying my best to understand some of the things they were saying. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm from America. Like everything, I was introducing myself in Chinese. It was very sweet." So we got our room placements, and like they gave us any food that we needed for the night, and that was our arrival. So the first day we were there, there this was Sunday, um, or our second day, um, we had, there was a morning service and everything, we got to see the service, uh, we got to rest after that, and then this is when we got to know the members a bit more. So there's teachers who are helping out with the summer camp, and they're all around my age, they're like 17 or 18, like they're young adults and everything, and they're called teachers, or like the staff members, because they were helping out with the church. So we got to meet them, um, 
we went out to dinner again um, later on that day, and we ate with the pastor and all the other teachers, and it was a sweet experience. Um, we got, they actually took us to this um, path that was along some water, and there was like this building and everything. Um, it was like, you could take pictures with it, there was like heart shapes and everything, it was really pretty. And we just got to walk together and get to know each other. So, uh, that same night, uh, I got to take a little walk around Chai City, it's like really close to the church, and I saw some sites, like I saw this open parking lot area where they could hold events or open night markets and everything. I saw a 7-Eleven, I went there, because I enjoy going to 7-Elevens in Taiwan, <laughs> and uh, I just like went to some little stores around there to see what was going on, and then I walked back to the church, it was pretty fun, and that was my first night. And so, the next day, on uh, Monday, their summer camp started. There's this church, Shangha, holds a summer camp. For, there's around 20 kids that come. Um, it's very fun. So, um, our schedule, we had a schedule, and we were like, they told us about it before. So, we would basically, we would wake up in the morning, around 8, and we would go down at like 9 or 9.30 a.m., and like the pastor and the teachers were really sweet because they would always like they everyone would have their breakfast and they would get us breakfast and like every day was from a different like it was a different place or like a different little restaurant so we'd have our breakfast and then it would start at around night so um, the first thing that the kids would do was there was around nine hymns that they were learning in Chinese and it was really interesting to see like other cultures uh, go about their religions and like have their own hymns like own languages and everything. And I tried to sing along. Um, the, a lot of the characters were written in traditional, because um, I'm learning Mandarin, and a lot of them were like traditional Chinese. So uh, I, yeah, I couldn't really read all of it, but thankfully they had English translations and everything, and it was really sweet to get to hear all these little kids sing together. <laughs> it, was just, it was so cute. Um, and later on, we got to pick some songs to present later. So it was fun. So then they would have a story time, usually the pastor, one of the teachers would tell them like a Bible verse or like a story about the Bible and they'd have a slideshow and everything. So they would have that for the kids. Then we would have like a little game time. So these kids would like get their little, their board games out, anything that they wanted to play together. And they would just play or they'd run around or anything. And then after that, we would have lunch time and they always have like these really good lunches. So first the kids would come up like, from here, the kids would come up, and, like make their little bowls, get their lunches, and then the teachers would come up. And there was like these really interesting meals, like rice and stuff. There was like different meats and eggs and everything that went together. It's pretty good. Um, so then after their lunch, they would have like a little nap or watch a movie time, and they would watch different movies or just lay down to go to sleep. So I would usually like the teachers would usually sit together or just like wait for that time to be over or rest themselves, and. Then they would wake up and they would have a crafting time. And I actually have some that I brought along to show like what we did. And I'll show that a bit later. But yeah, they had the crafting and we would usually help out with that. And it was really cool to see like all these kids create their different versions of whatever the assigned craft was. It was pretty cool. So after that, they would have like a physical activity time where they'd play a game. Um, they would like run around, like they'd be screaming a bit. It was really fun, but it was worth it. Uh, it was really nice. And then they would have a dessert um, at the end of the day. And then afterwards, after the summer school was over, we would go to eat together with all the teachers and the pastor. <coughs> so this, this so there, for the rest of the week, usually we would start out with our day, we would help out. And this is like when I started to get to know the kids. Like I was meeting them, like asking what their name was. And it was just very sweet to see how excited they were like, to know that I could speak Chinese as well. It wasn't that great, but I was like introducing myself. Um, and it was really nice. So uh, we actually did a few crafts, and I will show them. So one of our first crafts, uh, it's probably on the screen, was making these little frames. And we got pictures, actually, that we got to put into them. And we decorated them with these little sequins. And it was really fun to make those with the kids. Uh, next craft we did was these little bracelets. We all, all the kids got their beads and everything. They just, like, they started making their bracelets. They didn't really ask for help that much. They knew what they were doing. 
And then we made this little spin type thing and with all these different bottle caps they collected and you can spin it around. Uh, and then a really sweet moment for me is we had, these are kind of similar to Lego, but you can build things. And this one girl I met named Xinyu, she made me this little, um, she said it was a Tong Hulu, because she asked me in Chinese, she was like, oh, do, do you like Tong Hulu? And it's this little creep in Taiwan, it's like kind of all over, but usually you can find them in night markets and they like freeze different fruits and coat them in sugar, and it's a bit crunchy, it's pretty good. So she was like, do you like that? And I was like, yeah. So she was like, oh, well, I'll make you one. And she has her own, she made her own. So it's like little friendship charms. And I'll just keep this to remember her. It's so sweet to get to meet all these different kids. And then this one kid, I think he made a little cross. And he was like, this is for you. Like I saw him making it. And then he gave it to me. He was like, this is for you. And I was like, really? Like you just, you worked on that so much. And he was like, no, this is yours. It was just so sweet. So all these kids are just so nice. Um, they actually started teaching me. They really loved playing Jenga. Um, we played a lot of Jenga. Like some kids would run up to me during play time and be like, let's, let's, let's go play, let's go play. And we get our Jenga out and play. And this, and again, with Xinyu, the one that made me the little charm. She taught me how to play this one game called Xiangqi, which is, or Xiangqi. And it's similar to chess, but it has all these little pieces and they have the names for each piece on it. And they're written in Chinese characters, so you kind of have to learn what they are. It's a bit difficult to learn, to memorize. But thankfully, like, all these kids would come together whenever I'd try to learn how, and be like, this can eat this, like, this can eat this, and they'd like, be super excited. They'd tell me what you can and can't do in this game, and I kind of learned how to play it. It's very sweet that they tried to teach me how, so something we did together. Um, so, oh, actually one thing is that at the end of the summer camp, um, this was their last week when we came, they have, I have a picture here, they had like a little balloon party set off. Because all the teachers, the pastor, everyone got together and we made so many balloons and we put them in this little floaty thing. It was like a pool, kind of. And they all just threw the balloons around. It was, they were screaming, they were like popping them. It was kind of crazy, but they were having a fun time. It was like their little send off and it was very sweet. So that was like the end of the week. So then um, we, there was a lot of um, bonding outside of church, I think, like um, relationship building and everything. I think we got a closer bond to the pastor and all the other teachers. And we got to eat together. We traveled around. Like the pastor really made sure to show us all these different sites. Like in the Chai City, there were so many like museums and trails that we got to go to that were just so close to the church. And it was very kind of her to show us all these different locations. Um, I felt like every time we got together to eat, it was like a big family eating together. And I felt so like welcomed and it, it was just, it was really nice of them. Uh, we did a lot of activities together and I got to practice speaking a lot of Chinese.